वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स इन वन मोर वीडियो ऑन मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्पर्जन एंड इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस वीडियो लेक्चर स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन वेरिएंस एंड कॉफिशियंट ऑफ वेरिएशन विल बी डिस्कस्ड बट बिफोर वी स्टार्ट वी मस्ट नो वाई देर इज ए नीड ऑफ दीज मेजर्स आई होप यू रिमेंबर दिस एग्जाम्पल विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑफ मेन डेविएशन वी आर वी हैव डिस्कस दैट one kind of measures like arithmetic mean can not always describe the all the characteristic feature of different kind of data set as you can see here that there are five different kind of data set a b c d and e having the same arithmetic mean or average and if we are having only this major it is very difficult to describe whether these data sets are identical or similar or same as you can see here that data set a having all the values same whereas in data set b all the values are aggregated near the center value whereas in data set c if the deviation from the center value is clearly visible and in the data set d we can see that such deviation has been increased several fold and in the data set e we can see that 9 out of 10 values are 100 times less than the their center value therefore we can conclude that only the measures of central tendency cannot always describe the complete characteristic feature of different kind of data sets therefore there is a great need to apply measures of dispersion to find out the spread of a data which can be divided into two groups absolute measures of dispersion and relative measures of dispersion among various kind of absolute and relative measures of dispersion we have already discussed range coefficient of range mean deviation and coefficient of mean deviation but there are certain limitation with these kind of measures of dispersion for example we can see that range is extremely sensitive to outliers and it cannot be calculated for open end classes and it gives no weightage to the center value or internal feature of a data set on the other hand mean deviation can produce different kind of results from mean median and mod because we can calculate mean deviation from any of these three measures of central tendency in addition mean deviation violates the algebraic principle by ignoring the plus and minus sign In addition mean deviation is not capable of further algebraic treatment like t test or correlation and in last it can neither be determined by inspection or by graphical location to overcome these limitation we required other measures of dispersion such as standard deviation variance and coefficient of variation as all these three measures are closely related therefore all these measures will be covered simultaneously in this video introduction the variance and its square root the standard deviation are the two most frequently used measures of variability and both use all the data in their calculation the variance measures the variability in the data from the mean of the data the standard deviation is a statistic that measures the dispersion of a data set relative to its mean the standard deviation is calculated as the square root of variance by determining each data points deviation related to the mean if the data points are further from the mean there is a higher deviation within the data set thus the more spread out the data the higher the standard deviation squaring of deviation in variance and standard deviation eliminate the negative sign of deviation from the mean which is the main drawback of mean deviation and the sum of the squares of the deviation from the mean is often simply called as sum of squares the term variance was introduced in 1918 by english statistician sir ronald a fisher and it was the great english statistician carl pearson who coined the term standard deviation and its very famous symbol sigma in 
Standard deviation versus variance. Variance is derived by taking the mean of the data point, subtracting the mean from each data point individually, squaring each of these result, and then taking another mean of the square. Whereas standard deviation is the square root of the variance. The variance help determine the data spread size when compared to mean value. As the variance gets bigger, more variation in data values occurs, and there may be a larger gap between one data value and another. If the data values are all close together, the variance will be smaller. However, this is more difficult to grasp than the standard deviation because variance represents a squared result that may not be meaningfully expressed on the same graph as the original data set. On the other hand, standard deviation are usually easier to picture and apply. The standard deviation is expressed in the same unit of measurement as the data, which is not necessarily the case with the variance. Using the standard deviation, researcher may determine if the data has a normal curve or other mathematical relationship. If the data behave in a normal curve, then 68% of the data points will fall within one standard deviation of the average or mean, whereas larger variance cause more data points to fall outside the standard deviation. Smaller variance result in more data that is close to average. How it look like on a graph? The bell curve, also known as normal distribution, is commonly seen in statistics as a tool to understand standard deviation. The following graph of a normal distribution represents a great deal of data in real life. The mean or average is represented by the Greek letter mu in the center, and each segment colored in dark blue or light blue represents one standard deviation away from the mean. Or we can understand in this way that mean plus minus one standard deviation covers 68.27% of the population or mean plus minus two standard deviation cover 95.45% of the distribution and mean plus minus three standard deviation cover 99.73% of the population. But a normal distribution never touch the x-axis from either side or we can say that to cover the entire population we need infinity of standard deviation. Formula for calculating the measures. Variance for population, which is also known as sigma square, can be calculated by summation of x minus mu square divided by n, whereas variance for sample, which is known as s square, can be calculated by x minus x bar square divided by n minus 1. For Calculating standard deviation for population, we have to take out the square root of sigma square and to find out the value of standard deviation for a sample, we have to calculate the square root of variance for sample. In these formulas, mu stands for population mean, x bar stands for sample mean, capital N stands for population size and small n stands for sample size. The reason for dividing by n minus 1 rather than n as we might have expected is the theoretical consideration referred to as degree of freedom. In computing the variance, we say that we have n minus 1 degree of freedom. From a practical point of view, dividing the square difference by n minus 1 rather than n is necessary in order to use the sample variance in the inference procedure discussed later in coming videos of test for hypothesis. In some book, it is referred to use n instead of n minus 1 if number of observations are more than 30, but that is statically incorrect. Coefficient of variations. The standard deviation is useful as a measure of variation within a given set of data. When one desires to compare the dispersion in two sets of data, comparing the two standard deviation may lead to fallacious result. It may be that of two variables involved are measured in different units. 
therefore we need a different measure to compare the data of two series the coefficient of variation is the standard deviation expressed as a percentage of the mean and which can be calculated with the help of following formula coefficient of variation equal to standard deviation divided by mean and multiply by 100 we can understand importance of coefficient of variation with this example if we want to know what is more variable in elephant its body mass or life span then the standard deviation is not very informative because mass is measured in kilogram and life span is measured in years and only coefficient of variation would allow us to make this comparison these are some common terms which will be used in this video as well as in coming videos like population which include all the elements from a set of data and a sample which consists one or more observation drawn from the population a population is the entire group that you want to draw conclusion about and a sample is the specific group that you will collect data from the size of the sample is always less than the total size of the population in research a population doesn't always refer to people it can mean a group of containing elements of anything you want to study such as objects event organization countries species and many more depending on the sampling method a sample can have fewer observation than the population or the same number of observation more than one sample can also be derived from the same population a measurable characteristics of a population such as mean or standard deviation is called parameter but a measurable characteristic of a sample is called a statistic we already knew that the mean of a population is denoted by symbol mu but the mean of a sample is denoted by the symbol x bar therefore there are different formula for the standard deviation of a population and standard deviation of a sample merits of standard deviation among all measures of dispersion standard deviation is considered superior because it poses almost all the requested characteristic of a good measure of dispersion such as it is rigidly defined and free from any ambiguity therefore this is one of the most important and reliable measures of dispersion the squaring of deviation make them positive and the difficulty about algebraic sign which was experienced in case of mean deviation is not found standard deviation is based on all the items in the series so it is one of the best measure of dispersion standard deviation is least affected by the sampling fluctuation than other measures like mean deviation and quartile deviation it is not much affected by the fluctuation in sample for which it is widely used in testing the hypothesis and for conducting the different test of significance standard deviation can be used for mathematical operation and algebraic treatment it is also applicable in statistical analysis standard deviation is most prominently used in further statistical work for example in computing correlation squeeness regression and sample studies it is possible to calculate the combined standard deviation of two or more group which is not possible with many other measures for comparing the variability of two or more distribution coefficient of variation is considered to be most appropriate and this is based on mean standard deviation it is key note in sampling and provide a unit of measurement for the normal distribution demerits of standard deviation standard deviation is complex to compute and difficult to understand as compared to other measures of dispersion either quartile deviation or mean deviation it gives more weight to extreme item and less to those which are near to the mean because the square of the deviation which are big in size would be proportionally greater than the square of those deviation which are comparatively small for example 
division of 2 and 8 are in the ratio of 1 ratio 4 but their square that is 4 and 64 would be in the ratio of 1 ratio 16. In addition, standard deviation cannot be obtained for operand class frequency distribution. Standard deviation cannot be used for comparing the dispersion of two or more series given in different unit. Thus, coefficient of variation should be used for comparison. So, these were the pros and cons of standard deviation and variance. Dear friend, thank you for watching first part of this video on standard deviation, variance and coefficient of variation. In the second part of this video, we will see how to calculate standard deviation, variance and coefficient of variation in various kind of data set. Till then, like and share this video, press the bell icon to subscribe my channel. Jai Hind. Bye bye.